This video is proudly recorded and produced on OpenBSD. Let's talk about yet another OpenBSD security feature. So this security feature is called ASLR or Address Space Layout Randomization. It is a technique that is used to increase the difficulty of performing buffer overflow and ROP or return oriented programming attack that requires basically an attacker to know the location of an executable in memory. Hence, to prevent an attacker from reliably jumping, for example, to a particular exploited function in memory, ASLR randomly arranges the address space positions of key data, including the base of the executable and the positions of a stack, heap, etc. Then, as a result, an attacker cannot know the address without brute forcing, which is oftentimes difficult. Some of the facts about ASLR, this mitigation initially brought by the Linux PAX project in 2001. However, OpenBSD was the first mainstream operating system to implement and enabled it by default it enabled it was enabled in openbsd in 2003 later on in 2005 linux has followed the same and if we look into an operating system such as microsoft windows xp or windows server 2003 they didn't have aslr or they didn't have aslr fully there and hence it was disabled and it on the microsoft ecosystem aslr was fully implemented and enabled with the release of windows vista when it comes to android aslr was introduced and enabled in android version 4 ice cream sandwich in 2011 and nowadays all the modern operating system have ASLR enabled and in place by default. To understand ASLR better, we need to understand a program memory map. So as I mentioned, ASLR randomizes the memory address of a various section or segment of a program memory, meaning heap, stack, text, etc. So this is done to mitigate certain type of memory-based attacks. But what all these heap, stack, text, memory section of a program means? To understand it better, let's have a look at a program memory layout. So this is a program memory layout. And when we compile a program, the linker basically structure this layout and assigns memory address to each segment of the program layout and as you can see we have a different section we have text or code segments we have data segment bss heap and a stack and once the linker is done then we will have something like this meaning that each segment or section has a memory address to it so as a result of it when the operating system wants to load this program has to load the program in the memory addresses that is assigned by the linker to the virtual memory let's say this is simply the very basic idea of the program segments but what each of these program memory layout segment means. So we start from the bottom. We have text or code segment that contains the machine code instruction of the program. This one including the compiled functions, memory addresses. Then we have data segment. This one holds the global and static variables that are initialized at the compiled time. If those variables are not initialized at compiled time or they are set to zero, 
they are held in BSS segment. We have heap segment that is reserved for dynamically allocated data using functions such as malloc. And then we have a stack segment that is used for managing function calls, storing the local variables and managing function return addresses. So if we want to map the program memory layout to a sample C program, we will have something like this. We have a text or code segment. As you can see, it's pointing to the uh, functions in the program and the binary codes or the machine instructions. Then we have a global variable defined Z. This one would be actually sit in the data segment of our code and BSS here we don't have, but let's say if below int z we had something like int i without initializing that would have been sit in the BSS and then we have the stack here. As you can see, it points to where basically we defined our simple normal variables. Here we have variable x defined. Here we have a variable fp, which is literally a function pointer pointing to this uh, function above. And lastly, here there is heap, which we created a variable y with malloc. All right, enough of theory about the program memory map. Let's go back to the ASLR again. On OpenBSD, ASLR is enabled by default, same as Linux. However, on Linux, we can still disable ASLR, but on OpenBSD, it's not possible anymore. On Linux, we can check whether ASLR is enabled or disabled. Then later on, we can enable and disable it. So we have to actually cut out the randomized VA space under proxy's kernel. And if the value is two, means that the ASLR is enabled. If the value is zero, means that ASLR is disabled. To disable it, we can just say echo zero, and then basically we put it uh, in the syskernel randomize VA space again, and that disables our ASLR. So if we carry it again, it's disabled. So let's enable it back because we are going to play around with the code right now. All right, let's move to the practical part. So for that one, the code I have shown you earlier, I put it in a C program here. Now, if we go to a machine that is ASLR enabled, so this is a Linux machine, we are going to do it also on their OpenBSD, but I use mainly Linux in this case, because we can disable ASLR and then see the difference very easily. So first, let's try on the Linux machine. So ASLR is enabled. And if we compile our, our code ASLR C, and then if we run it, we run twice, we can see the segments of the code are randomized. So this one, it's loaded in a different segment, the code section. A stack is, is loaded in the different memory address. Same with the heap and the, the data segment. So this is what ASLR does. If we disable ASLR, then these addresses would be fixed on every uh, executions. So now if we run the code, let me clear it again. You can see the values are all the same. So it won't be changed. As a result, the attacker can guesstimate the memory segment of our code easier. So if we do it also under OpenBSD, it's also the same with the difference that we cannot actually disable the ASLR. So as you can see, the memory addresses are randomized. Now, 
ASLR to have it fully effective and efficient requires the code to be compiled with the Pi flag. What is Pi flag? Pi stands for position independent executables that are executables generated from the position independent codes or PIC. To put it simply, when we compile our program with the pi flag instead of instead of linker assigning a memory address to each segment of our program a fixed memory address instead it assigns an offset from a base value and this base value would be randomized by the aslr so as a result we have something like what is demonstrated meaning that the, the, each time we run our code, we have a different memory address for heap, for a stack, for data, etc., etc. But if we don't have Pi enabled, then linker assigns the hard-coded value. Fortunately, all the modern compilers, including GCC and Clang, they shift with Pi enabled by default. On OpenBSD also, the Pi is enabled by default on most of the architectures since OpenBSD 5.3 that was released in 2013. So put it simply, ASLR and Pi come hand in hand. Now, to demonstrate the difference of a code that is enabled when Pi enabled versus when it's disabled, let's actually enable back our ASLR here and then compile our sample code once with Pi enabled and once with Pi disabled. So just to recap, I'm going to compile the code with Pi enabled and ASLR enabled. And if we run it, we can see the memory addresses are randomized. Now. If I disable the Pi and compile my program without Pi support, so ASLRC, and if we run it again, we can see the ASLR is not full is not in full force because the code or the binary program now is not position independent. As a result, ASLR cannot randomize the code section and the data section as you can see in both of the executions if we run it even for a third time we can see that the code section and the data section of our program is not randomized however aslr still can randomize the stack and the heap section as you can see for each execution our stack address and heap addresses are different. If we do the same actually on the OpenBSD, it yields to the same result. So CC no pi and then ASLR. We can see that the code section and the data section are fixed, whereas the stack section and the heap section addresses are randomized. So this is all about Pi and ASLR in nutshell. Even though that ASLR nowadays is enabled on all the modern operating system by default, OpenBSD was the first operating system that implemented and enabled ASLR by default and afterwards other operating systems followed the path. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I would like to take a moment to thank Patreon contributors Grog with 30 generous dollar, Stellar Orbit with 20 generous dollar, Inlakesh with 10 generous euro, OpenBSD Maximalist, Alexander M, Hogarth Hackscock, Monthy, Russell Willis, and Seneca, OpenBSD Enthusiast, Diemt, and Liquid Mobius, and finally OpenBSD Curious, Ryan Woodford. Thank you guys for your contributions.